They said it wasn't possible. That it couldn't be done. Well, actually, I'm pretty sure it has been done, at least, but not like in an LP form. Welcome to the Let's Play of Steel Battalion! You madman! You fool! You'll doom us all! But Ark, you uh, you have a modded Xbox. You could have easily just loaded an ISO and booted it up and get to the main menu. True, I do have it as an ISO loaded onto my Xbox's hard drive, but I also have the controller because that's the only way to get past this menu. Fuck you. <laughs> oh, what if you used like a dance pad or something? Yeah. You know someone has tried. They 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 can't get far. At least at least with this game, it is 100 <laughs> percent. Well. Okay, not 100%. It is mostly impossible to play this without the without the specific controller, as you're about to see. I have seen people make a workaround where they basically map all the inputs to an Xbox 360 controller with chat pad. And, like, that little keyboard is what's used for all the extra functions. But we're not doing that. That just, just feels <laughs> awkward. That... I don't even want to think about how that would work. Yeah. But at least here, with how important this controller is... It makes sense that they would include, like, a in-game, like, calibration and button check function. Like, as you're seeing right here with this little joystick, it's important to make sure that it's properly calibrated. Since, unlike most other joysticks you'd be familiar with, especially, like, if you're using, like, a fly stick or whatever, this actually is a stick that does not center back on itself. It hmm. stays in place. Which is quite an interesting design. <laughs> Bit unusual, I have to say. Yeah. And of course, here's where all the button check is with the different blocks. The bottom one is where you have your pedals for gas, brake, and slide step, which is basically your dodge. You use the left, uh, left and right ones a lot, brake one barely. But of course, on the left, there's stuff like a gear shift, goes up to five, down to neutral and reverse. There's, there's like another joystick that, in a unique uh, kind of method only goes left and right but has a little analog stick on top of it and and little five toggle switches that are part of the startup uh, process and nothing else i love that <laughs> yep there's a little dial that you use to tune into different frequencies and the buttons up top are the different like uh like voice inputs that you essentially like plug in you have like function keys like keys for switching weapons and all kinds of other miscellaneous stuff of course there's obviously the big joystick on the right which controls like your weapons the triggers and buttons are for firing and locking on more buttons for different functions in the cockpit start ignition cockpit hatch and of course the most important eject <laughs> because this game will not just be content with killing you if you don't eject it will delete your save file <laughs> yeah I Probably like a lot of uh, the people watching this, I know this game purely by reputation and the gigantic controller, and yeah. the fact that the game will just be like, "Oh, you died. Fuck you. Back to the beginning." Yeah. So yeah, we've already spent like a good couple minutes already just focusing on the options and this controller, and there's a very good reason for this. It's how this let's play is going to be done. Um. With this first video in particular, you're going to see the controller in action side by side with the gameplay footage because words still, I feel, cannot express enough how fucking ridiculous this whole thing is. However, once we're past this first video, you viewers at home will get the option of deciding whether or not you want to continue watching the LP with that controller cam or if you just want the more pure, like, raw gameplay experience. Because, you know, choice Sorry. is good. Th th this is the name we're going with, really? No. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah, um, unfortunately, we couldn't get him on board. He's still on contract with Mithril. Damn it. Yeah. It's a shame. So, yeah. Just going with the call sign I always go with in these games. <laughs> it, wor it worked for me in Armored Core. It works for me here. And, and obviously, I'm not going to use my real, like, birthday because this takes place in 2080, so we got to have our, have our pilot be at a more appropriate age for this sort of thing. So, yeah, we'll go <laughs> 2053. That seems, that, that seems like you'd be 27, the, about the right age for, like, the military to decide, okay, you, you get to pilot our big dumb robots now. <laughs> well, you seem reasonably... Hmm... 
Yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Your, your, your behavioral tests seem to indicate that you are good at obeying orders and not doing so something so stupid as to fall into a cockpit during an enemy attack. Oh, what are the odds of that? Yeah, what do you think this is, an anime? <laughs> what are you, 14? <laughs> so here we are, the training corps for the Pacific Rim Forces, <laughs> and we're going to shut so, up because this is one of the few voice cutscenes. From today, I am your instructing officer, responsible for your VT training. In the following six months of rigorous training, you will be pushed beyond your limits. When this is all over, you will be the best there is. So you can thank me when I'm busting your powder fresh ass. Is that understood? Understood, sir! Now, follow me. I'll show you around the garrison. Yes, sir! This is the hangar. What's the matter? Sir, may I ask what the VT is called? I've never seen one like it, sir. The M7 Decider. I'm sure you've at least heard the name before. The next generation VT that will replace the existing models. It's now being tested here. But already it has shown results that far surpass its predecessors. If you prove yourself worthy, you might be piloting one someday. We're moving on. Huh? Sir! Over there is the simulator room. You'll spend at least eight weeks in there before you can hop into the real thing. What? What the? in the hangar operation. What? What are you planning? I'll pilot it. Hold them off, sir. Uh, no! That's insane. You don't have the qualification to pilot a BT. Uh, let alone an experience with it. I think I can do it looking at the manual, sir. Trust me. No! Wait! Wait. What did I just fucking say? <laughs> okay, so far, so front mission. <clears throat> yeah. So there you are. Going through the best parts of playing Steel Battalion, no matter what. <laughs> it's, it's the pre-flight check. That's what the toggle switches are for, as you can see. <laughs> And even before that, you have to manually hit the cockpit hatch and ignition. And then once all green bars are sufficiently filled, you hit start. Oh, but first, before we get to actual battle, this is the other important thing we need to go over quickly. <laughs> HUD breakdown! Oh, feel Jesus Christ. Feel free to pause this video once, like, all, like, the different descriptions show up so you can better process it, because I will refer to these names very frequently throughout. I think I'm gonna have to have this open on a second screen. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Yeah, this... this game is the most hardcore mech simulation. Mech Warrior, eat your fucking heart out. Yes, there's all kinds of features, including a fire warning lamp in the top right corner, because of course this mech can and will catch on fire. Uh, where's the drinks cooler? Uh, it's off screen. Ah, okay. Go oh, fuck off! <laughs> <laughs> yep, and also, uh, a little excerpt from the manual showing what all the different HUD, uh, readouts say. 
because we can't have all of them displayed in game at once. And now back to the action. Well, my brain is completely fucked. Yeah. So this mission is like, it's real dead fucking simple, despite the amount of time that they give you for it, which is 40 minutes. You just have to go and destroy the two VTs, or like the specific models called Vits, that are attacking this base. Including the one right now that is trying to kill us before we even leave the hangar. <laughs> Yeah, this yeah the decider that we're that we're using right now, it's got four weapons currently, all of which have like very good different uses. Like the 315 smooth bore that we have as our main weapon on the right is very good for dealing with DTs. Like a single shot does a good amount of damage. We have a chain gun on our left side, which is very uh, which is very useful when dealing with like small infantry and artillery when close enough range. There are other weapons that we have equipped, including a 120 mm, a 120mm like machine gun, which is another uh, like main weapon on our right side. That like it's weaker than the smooth bore, but one thing that you'll uh, soon start to know is that like with some exceptions, if you're using a main weapon, it's intended for use with uh, against other VTs or big machines. If you're going against smaller targets, you generally want to use like the smaller sidearms, like the chain gun that we have. One of those exceptions, though, is the 205 Plasma Torch. It's a <laughs> melee weapon. Uh, okay. Yeah. Because because we can't have giant robots without like tools for getting up close and personal. Although I switched to it at the wrong time here because I forgot that. This uh, little machine called the giraffe is in our way first. It's a moving turret, and it hurts. But the thing is that we can't have the plasma torch out all the time because it disables our ability to lock onto targets or, yeah, the, or use any other mean weapon. The giraffe there kind of looked like a weaponized uh, stair car. Kind of does, yeah. Now that was really cool because I deployed the plasma torch and not only to hit it, but it went through that Vince's projectile, so I basically cancelled <laughs> the attack. Okay, but here comes the finisher. Back to the plasma torch. <laughs> this torch of mine burns with an awesome power. Plasma torch, hurricane! <laughs> <laughs> I know it's not a drill, but close enough. <laughs> So yeah, that's how the game opens. So the the, the tutorial really isn't. <laughs> it's like <laughs> there there you go, fucking play with the, the, the robot, hope you don't die. Yeah, and the thing is even if you did die, it would like it wouldn't really amount to anything because this prologue mission is only available when you start a new game, and it doesn't save until after you complete it, so it's like <laughs> It it's it still checks out with the whole simulation aspect. God, this game, this game is so fucking cool. <laughs> Gonna say for uh, an original Xbox game, it still holds up pretty well. Yeah, there are things about it where you look at it that there's clear technical limitations, like the draw distance. But it does a really good job with the post-processing effects to kind of, like, sell that you're viewing the world through, like, a cockpit monitor. Oh, look, but, Dr. Strangelove. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, right here, this is giving the rundown on what the plot is. The Congress of Not China basically deciding to withdraw from the Not UN and decides to get very territorial and attack the neighboring islands to, like... Pretty, pretty much, like, forcibly reintegrate into itself. <laughs> I mean, for fuck's sake, it's called Hai Shi Dao. Like, the names of the places that we go to, like, in this country are all very, like, Chinese-sounding. Yeah, it's, it's kind of reminding me a bit of the, um, Ace Combat series. Um, yeah, yeah with all, 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 the, all the places real. being... Yeah, all of them being just slightly to the left of uh, who they'd be in real life. Pretty much, yeah. Oh yeah, and also like that training facility we were at, that, like, 
I guess just because that was in close enough proximity, like, that was totally being attacked by the High Chi Dao. So now everything's like, alright, fuck these guys. We need, we need, we need to invade. Okay, that place was at least 60% trashed before we even jumped in the cockpit. Uh, listen, the Pacific Rim forces, like, that, they don't have much of a budget to go around. There's, they, they have priorities. <laughs> I do also like these final shots because it does give you a preview of what we're going to go through in our next mission. <laughs> the, fr the, the mission that it considers mission one because it is a proper one.